We are going to work on the review for the common assessment, the second common assessment. Um, so let me pull that up. Okay, here are the first two problems that you need to do. Okay, um, I will do the first one, but if you think you know what to do, go ahead and do that and then come back and see how you did. Right here on the first one, it is it wants to find the solution to the equation. So I split this in half and I'm gonna make one of these, I'm gonna set it equal to Y. And then the other side, I'll set that equal to Y and I'm gonna put it in Desmos. So let's go ahead and do that. You should have Desmos.com pulled up and I'm gonna do Y equals, it was one half, let me arrow out of it, um, 4X minus six. That was what was on the right-hand side when we look at the, or left-hand side right there. Then we're gonna click below it and put what was in the right-hand side, y equals, oops, equals three times x plus one minus four. Now remember, you're looking to see where the two lines intersect. So I'm looking down here, I'm gonna click where they intersect. My answer is going to be the x value of the ordered pair, it says negative two. So my answer right here is going to be x equals negative two. And that's what we should get. Now you try and do number two, pause the video and then come back and see how you did. So on the next one, I'm gonna click out of these. I'm gonna click inside and I'm gonna put the left-hand side in y equals five, six, five divided by six, arrow out of it, and I've got six X minus 12. Then down below, I have Y equals three times X minus one in parentheses and then minus five. Again, looking to see where the two lines intersect, I click on that spot. It is the X number right here. My answer is X equals one. That's how you will do those. If I move this up right here, we've got number three and four. Uh, let's see, there we go. It's asking us what is the slope of the line that passes through the point negative two, four and four, six. Remember slope, the formula is Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So I'm gonna label my points X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Now, Y2 is six, then you have your minus, and then your Y1 is four over X2 is four, minus is in there, stays in there, and then your X1 is negative two. So now let's simplify. Six minus four is two, minus a negative changes to positive. This is a six. You need to reduce that. Both of those divide by two. So your answer should be one third. Try and do that on number four, please. Pause the video and then come back and see how you did. I have X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So I'm gonna do Y2, negative six, minus Y1, <clears throat> which is negative four, divided by X2, which is four, minus X1, which is negative two, minus a negative, they change to positive. So negative six plus four is negative two, four plus two is six. Again, both of these can be reduced by two. This time your slope is negative one third. Let's look at the next two. The next two want to know, what is the effect of the graph of the linear parent function? This is the linear parent function right here. When f of x is replaced by this right here. 
So what this means, we're going to go into the calculator and you're going to make this y equals x and a second equation, which is going to be y equals x minus 4. And let's see what happens to our graphs. So we're going to go into Desmos. You're going to put the click inside and put the parent function y equals x. Click below and do the second equation y equals x minus 4. Now, here is my original equation right here, y equals x, okay? What happened to the red, red line? My new y-intercept, look, it moved down here to negative 4. Every point from the black line to the red line, it moved down four, point, 4 units. So what you're going to say is it shifted down 4 units. And it did this because you need to see this right here. It says minus four. When it is a minus, it's telling you to do it down however many units it tells you. So now do the same thing and try and figure out what happens on number six. Pause the video and come back and see how you did. What you should have done is you'll take the first equation and make it y equals x, the parent function. The second one, we're going to make it y equals x plus 1. Now, hopefully you saw what happens when you're adding. Well, let's look at the graph and see. So if I go, I leave the parent function in, in here. The other one, though, I changed it to y equals x plus 1. Look what happened now. Here's my parent function. Then the new function is the red line. The y-intercept, every point moved up one unit. So this right here, it shifted up one unit. That's what you should have gotten. Okay, so let's look at the next ones. Let me move my paper to find them. Okay, we're going to look at number six and or seven and eight. Number seven says, what is an equation of a line that is perpendicular to this line right here and goes to the point negative three, four, and it says to write it in standard form? Well, first off, we need to get the slope. We have a slope of one third. So the original slope is one third, the perpendicular slope. Remember, flip it over. So three over one, and it was positive. Now it becomes negative. Divide those numbers, and I get negative 3. This is the slope I'm going to use. I'm going to use this slope and this point. So now we need to put it into point-slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. My slope right here is negative 3. My x number is negative 3. My y number is 4. Now, remember, minus and negative, that changes these to positive. So I have y minus 4 equals, multiply here, negative 3x, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. We're supposed to write this in standard form. Remember, standard form, ax plus by equals c. So we've got to move this 4 to the other side. I get y equals, these cancel, negative 3x minus 5. Okay, I've got to get the x and y on the same side, so that's got to go over there. So I have to add 3x to each side. My equation is 3x plus y equals negative 5. This is my equation in standard form. I know I'm done because I don't have any fractions. And this A number right here is positive. So this is my answer. Doing what I just did on this one, please try and do number eight. So on number eight, you should have gone and here's your slope. 
to find your perpendicular slope, you would have flipped this over to five over two. Instead of positive, you would have made it negative. This is your new slope. So now I have the slope and the point. So when I go to put it into point slope form, remember y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. m is your slope right here negative five over two. Then my x1 right here, my x1 is uh, negative 10. My y1 is four. Here's my minus and negative changes to positive. So I'm gonna have y minus four equals negative five halves times x, negative five halves x, negative five halves times 10. Put that in the calculator, you end up getting um, negative 25. All right, let's move this four to the other side. So I add four to each side. I get y equals negative five halves x, plus 21. This is actually slope intercept form, but they want it to be in standard form. So I need to move these x's over here. So I'm going to add 5 halves x to each side. So I get 5 over 2x plus y equals 21. Now, to get rid of this fraction, you have to multiply the entire equation by two. So when you do that, this becomes five X, then this is two Y, and this is equals 40, uh, 42. Did I miss one? Oh, you know what? I messed up right here. This is supposed to be a negative. That's supposed to be negative 21. So that meant that was negative. And so this would be negative 42. This is your equation in standard form. All right, so let's look at the next ones. Let's look at nine and 10. Move this right down here. I'll just look at number nine first. It says the table below represents some points on the graph of a linear function. What is the rate of change of y with respect to x for this function? Okay, the biggest thing is what does rate of change mean? Rate of change is the same as the slope. So remember, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The change in y over the change in x. So I can take two of my points two, seven, like I, it doesn't matter which ones, I can take these first two, two, seven, and four, eight, and let's put them in the slope formula, x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to have eight minus, right, seven over four minus two. So seven, eight minus seven is one, four minus two is two. This is my slope. This is my rate of change. And one way, if you look at this, look, when you have the change, how do you get from seven to eight? You add one, eight to nine, add one. That's where this one is coming from. Then the change, see this is the change in y, the change in x plus two, plus two, plus two. That's where this two is coming from. Okay, using the same thing, if I gave you this problem, please find the rate of change in this one on number 10. So remember, rate of change is slope. So if I chose the, these two, I'd have negative five, seven, and zero, nine. 
x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to have 9 minus 9 minus 7 over 0 minus negative 5. 9 minus 7 is 2. A negative and a negative changes to positive, so this would be 5. This is the slope you should have come up with. Well, look at that. Look here. The change in y, delta y, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. There it is up here. The change in x, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. There's where they come from. Let's look at number 11. On number 11, it says that the value of y varies directly. That's important right here, varies directly with x. Which function represents the relationship be between x and y when y is 5, 6 and x is 10? What you will do, remember, when they talk about varies directly, it is a proportional relationship. So I will do y over x to find my k value, my constant of variation. You take your y number divided by your x. So here's my y divided by my x. I'm gonna do five, six, I know it's a fraction, but still put all of that over it, divided by 10. Put that in the calculator exactly how you see it. When you, you can even use your phone calculator, five divided by six divided by 10, and it will give you your answer. If I work this out, oh, let's see here. Okay, so that's one way to do it, put it in the calculator. If I do this, I'm gonna have five over six divided by 10. Okay, that's the same as 10 over one. If I did this by hand, it would be five over six times one tenth. Okay, this is how you would go by, do it by hand. I think it might just be easier. Just do it the way I'm showing you in the calculator right here. When you do that, you're, you actually, your answer, it's gonna give you a decimal, but your answer should be one twelfth. And here's how you do that. I guess I will go ahead and show you by hand. Five, six divided by 10, you would make this over one. You have to change it, five, six times one over 10. So when I go to do this, I have five times one is five, six times 10 is 60. If you divide five by both of these, that's where you come up with the answer right there of 1 12th. Try and do, oh, where'd my paper go? Try and do number 12, set it up, and try and find your constant of variation the same way we just did on number 11, and then come back and see how you did. So on this one, again, you're going to do y divided by x. So it says y is 4 fifths divided by your x, which is negative 10. If you put it in a calculator, you would put it as 4 divide 5 divided by negative 10. That's what you would do to find your answer, especially if it was multiple choice. By hand, I'm going to do 4 divided by 5 divided by negative 10. Put this over 1. So you, you can't divide like this. You got to change it to multiply. So it's 4 fifths times negative one tenth, which gives you four times negative one is negative four, five times 10 is 50. Both of those numbers you can divide by two. You get negative two over 25. That would be your answer. Let's look at number 13. Oh, and that should be 14, not 24, typo. Okay, so number 13 says, what is the slope of a horizontal line that goes through the point two four? 
Okay, what is the slope and the equation? Sorry, horizontal line. Remember, horizontal line goes like this, it goes across. What is the slope of all horizontal lines? Remember, one way to remember that is horizontal has a Z in it. Zero starts with a Z. All of your equations that are a horizontal line, right? So if here's my graph and I have a horizontal line, it crosses the Y axis. That means it's gonna be this number here. So I'm gonna write Y equals four. That should be your answer. Try and do number 14 and come back and see how you did. Okay, again, horizontal line. So that meant your slope is zero. Your equation is going to be the Y number. So it's going to be Y equals two. So let's look at 15 and 16. Let me do number 15 and then you can try and do number 16. This time it wants to know what is the slope in the equation of a vertical line that goes to the point two, three. Vertical goes up and down. The slope of a vertical line is undefined. It's not a number, it's undefined because you, you can't, it has a wide, uh, the bottom number is zero when you do the slope. Um, one thing is vertical starts with a V. U is a close to a V. I'm not sure how you would remember that, but that's one way you do it. A vertical line, if I draw a vertical line and there's my axis, it's going to touch, coordinate grid is gonna to touch my X axis. That means my equation is going to be the X number, X equals two. Try and do number 16. Again, it's talking about a vertical line. So my slope is undefined. And right here, I have my equation x equals negative one. We have a couple more problems to practice. All of these questions, these type of questions are gonna be on your common assessment you're gonna take. This one says, what is the slope of an equation that is perpendicular to the x-axis and passes to the point seven three? Well, let's think about this. Here is my graph. Here is my x-axis. Okay, so here's the x-axis. If it is perpendicular, it means it hits it at an 80, a 90 degree angle. So it's gonna be up and down. It's gonna be a vertical line. So if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, it's a vertical line. We just went over the fact above that vertical lines have a slope that is undefined. Okay, so if it goes up and down, it touches the x-axis, that means it's gonna be this number. So it's gonna be x equals seven. I would make sure to have these notes to be able to help you on your common assessment. So now try number 18, the same way I just did number 17. So again, it wants the slope in the equation of a line that is perpendicular to the x-axis. Here's my graph, here's my X. My X axis, if it is perpendicular, it goes up and down, it's vertical. So that means my slope is undefined. Okay, since it's a vertical line, it touches the X axis, it's the X number, so the equation is X equals three. Here are the last two. It says, what is the equation of the line that passes through the points two, four, and one, three in standard form? Okay. First thing we have to do is we have to make, find the slope. So x1, y1, x2, y2. So you have y2, three, minus y1, which is four, over one, minus two. To find your slope, when I 
subtract here, three minus four is negative one. One minus two is negative one, which gives me a positive one. This is the slope I'm gonna use. You use one of the two points, it doesn't matter which one, so I'm gonna use the first one here in this slope. We're gonna put it in point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. My slope is one. My X number is going to be two. My Y number is going to be four. Now, to put it in a standard form, first we need to do the multiplying right here. The distributive property, y minus four equals one times x is one x, one times negative two is negative two. Then you're gonna add four to each side. I get y equals x plus two. Okay, that's slope intercept form. So now move your x to the left. So you're gonna subtract x from each side. So I get negative x plus y, these cancel equal two. Well, that's great, x and y are on the same side, but the x can't be negative. So if I change the sign to everything, if I change x to positive, change the rest of it, minus y equals negative two. This is your equation in standard form. Please try and do that same type of stuff with number 20, so pause the video and then come back and see how you did. So the first thing you're gonna do, right? We're gonna do x1, y1, x2, y2. We're gonna go here and I'm gonna do y2 minus y1, negative three minus four. Then one minus negative two, which will give me negative seven over three. This is the slope I'm gonna use. I'm going to use this slope and this point. So let's see here, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. My slope is negative seven over three. My X number is going to be negative two. My Y number is going to be four. Now do the distributive. Well, wait, before I even do that, minus a negative, that's got to change to positive first. Then I do the distributive property. So I'm going to have Y minus four equals negative seven thirds X. Now this right here, this is over one. I get negative 14 over three. I don't like those fractions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply everything by the denominator, everything by three to get rid of it. So three times Y is three Y. Three times negative four is negative 12 equals. Now when you do three times negative seven thirds, it gives you negative seven X three times negative 14 thirds is negative 14. Now the fraction's gone. Okay, so since the fraction's gone, now I'm going to add 12 to each side. I get three Y equals negative seven X minus two. Add seven to X to each side. I get seven X plus three Y equals negative two. This is your answer in standard form. 